Christine, and I can handle the marketing here at 2W Technologies and will be the moderator today. If at any time during Steve's presentation you have questions, please send them through the chat function that is at the left-hand side of your screen. There will be an interactive Q&A at the end, and we will try to get to all of your questions then. We do have a packed house today, so uh, we'll do as many as we can, time will allow. For those of you who might not be familiar with 2W Technologies, we are a full-service certified Epicor and IT infrastructure consulting firm. We specialize in manufacturing solutions, but also have a slew of clients from various other industries as well. Um, if you want more information on our products and services, you can visit our website at 2wtech.com. The presenter for today's webinar is going to be Steve Lindquist, who is a business intelligence consultant for us here at 2W Tech. I am going to now turn it over to Steve, and he's going to go ahead and get started. All right, Steve. Very good. Good morning or afternoon, depending where you are. As Sue mentioned, I'm Steve Lindquist, a business intelligence consultant at 2W. My focus, uh, my main focus uh, at 2W is data migration for re-implementations and developing SSRS and EAQs. Okay, we're going to focus on adding some. Adding some top and sizzle to the SSRS report. Now, the report supplied by Epicor for the most part works, but most users find they need some adjustments. So, let's start with some things that you can do. In most cases, it's pretty easy. In the report design, one of the most requested actions we get is my field's being cut off, I can't see the full part description. I'm going to show you how you can adjust the cell height. If the height is adjusted, sometimes the field gets too tall. So we can merge adjacent cells to stretch out the display and get back some of your real estate. We're also going to talk about rectangles. Rectangles are a container that you can put into a cell. And the rectangle allows you to have multiple objects in a single cell or a table. You can adjust the layout to fix the height, width, uh, make everything line up properly. You can also format a rectangle to put on borders to add color. And with color, you can use color to conditionally format and bring attention to important aspects of the report to make it easier for the user. And finally, it's possible to apply multiple formats within a single text box. Maybe you want the, the beginning to be bolded or something to be red or italic or underlined. This can all be done within a single text box. Before we start, though, I want to have a word about my report. If you make changes to a live report, you are going to lose the changes the next time you upgrade. Always make the changes in the custom reports folder. The custom report folder is left intact when you upgrade. Similarly, if you modify a report data definition, you should say, duplicate it and save it, as data definitions are also overwritten when you upgrade. Nice thing with version uh, Epicor 10.1 is that in the report style, you can click on options and copy the report style. And this will bring over the folder and the report elements into the custom report folder for you. Earlier versions, you need to go into the SSRS report server and create a folder in the custom reports. So if you're going to do the AR form, you create a folder in the custom reports. Use the same name as in the live folder. So if you're doing AR reform, do the AR form. In the live folder, hover over each of the report elements. Click the drop down box, select drop down, and save. And repeat that for each element that's in that live folder. Then go back to the custom report, the new folder you just created. Click upload file and browse to find the file. It's usually in, by default, in the downloads folder in your file structure and repeat that for each of your report elements. As far as reports, let's start with cell height. Um, as you can see, this report gives you all the information, but the part description is cut off. If you go to the Reports Builder and right-click the text box under General, you can click the box Allow Height to Increase. And the part, now, the part description will now show fully. Let me show you real quick how we can do this. Grab the proper report. 
if you right click, text box properties, allow height to increase. And the height's now tall. Let's go back to the uh, presentation. Merging cells allows you to stretch data across multiple adjacent cells. Um, in this example, it's more effective if we would delete the column and add a row below the part number and merge the cells and add a description back. So you start by deleting the column and then underneath the part number, highlight the row, right click, insert the row, and inside the group below. This will keep all the data together. Next, you highlight the first cell, hold the shift key down, use the arrow, and arrow over to the right. And then right click and select merge cell. And then you just put the part description back. So let's, uh, let's walk through that one real quick also. So we are going to get rid of the part description, right click, delete the column, highlight the row, insert the row inside the group below. Put your cursor in the first cell, hold your shift key down, arrow to the right, right click, and merge the cells. And then just go back and select your part description. Now you've got some real estate back so you can stretch things out a little bit as well. And if we run it, you now have most of your vertical space back. When you use rectangles, they allow you to have multiple objects in one text box. So we're going to add the unit of measure to the on-hand quantity. To start by deleting the on-hand quantity um, field. And then if you click on insert rectangle and then click on the on-hand quantity, a rectangle will be placed. Then if you go back, back up to the tabs row, the insert, and insert a text box, It'll and click on the on-hand quantity rectangle, we'll insert a text box, and do it a second time for our second field that we want to insert. And use the drop-down box and select which fields you want for each text box. And then you need to go through and position the text box. So, Take your part quantity and drag it to the upper left-hand corner of the rectangle. And then if you highlight the part bin and the UOM, hold the shift key down, right-click, select layout, you can align top, meaning the top of each of the text boxes will be on the same level. Now, when you do that, the first object that you click, in this case, the on-hand quantity becomes the anchor. And there are white handles around the anchor. As you hold the shift key down and select additional elements, you'll have a black handle. Everything will be based on the anchor. So when you, when you um, right click and do the layout and say align tops, it'll align to the anchor. Or you can say out the same height. It'll be the same height as the anchor or the same width, same width as the anchor. So everything works in that, uh, that same way. So after we've done that and we run the report, we can see now that we have the part quantity and the unit of measure in the same field. But we're missing the border and we have quite a few zeros for your decimal place. So we're going to do a little formatting on the text boxes and the, and the rectangle. So on the part bin, if you right click and say text box properties, and under, under the number, you can adjust and, say, and determine how many decimal places you want. And usually I check the thousand separator. For large numbers, it's easier for the user to, uh, to uh, read. And then we're going to add the border around the rectangle. So if you click a blank space in the rectangle, and on the, on the right side properties menu, 
Under the border, you can select the color of light gray, and the border style, you make it solid. So let's do that real quick, and we can go through these few things. So we're going to start by getting rid of this. And under Insert, we're going to insert a rectangle. Now that the rectangle is set, by the listening to the properties menu. So now you can see that it's called rectangle one. We're going to insert text box, and we're going to insert a second text box. And we'll size it down a bit. And make sure it's in the upper left-hand corner. A little trick is to go down to the position, and you can put it in the zero, zero position. And we're going to make this the on-hand quantity, and this will be the unit of measure. And now if we select this, it is now the anchor. You can see the white lines around it. Shift key. Select the UOM, right click, layout, and I want to align the tops. And now they're lined up properly. And we can close up this. And if we click on here in the expression, text box properties, and the number, and I want number, use the decimal. And then the blank space of the rectangle on the, on the border. I want the color to be light gray. So that becomes my default color. And my border style, I want to default to solid. And when we run the report, you now have two decimal places and we have our border. So it's back as it should be. Go back to our design. Okay, now the use of color. It's very useful if you want to draw your user's attention to specific details in a report. The report file that we're looking at now, um, but if you're looking for negative quantities of inventory, you have to scan and, and read for content to find anything negative. But if you add formatting, color formatting to negative, it's easy to see where your problem lies. So you start by highlighting the cell, the rectangle, click on the blank space. On the property side menu, click the drop down box for the background color and click the expression. And the expression is a conditional, so it's an if statement. But in SSRS, it's called an immediate if, so it's IIF, as opposed to Excel, which is IF. And you want to look on the, uh, in the category you want, um, just like the BAQ field and double click the part bin on hand quantity, and that will put your proper syntax of the field exclamation point, uh, the part bin on hand quantity dot value, and put in your test value. So we want to say if it's less than zero, and then put in the result. If it's less than zero, you want it to be red, otherwise no color. And you want to make sure that you put the colors, <coughs> excuse me, between that uh, in double quotes, and then close your parentheses. So let's do that real quick. So we're going to click on the rectangle and the background color. We're going to select the expression. And we're going to say equals if. And we want the field and the part on hand quantity less than zero. Then we want red. Otherwise, no color, and close your parenthesis. And when you look at the report, you need to make sure you spell everything properly. 
in case I forgot my leading double quote. See a negative. Your, your eyes are naturally drawn to the color, makes it easier for your users. All right. Let's talk about multiple formats in a single cell. So when you're formatting a text ring, you can change the font size, the font style, you could make it Comic Sans, you could make it Wing Ding, you can change the color, you can make it bold, underlined, italic. But it's all accomplished through HTML text tags. So we're going to look at a different report. We're going to look at the customer on time delivery report. And what we want to do is make the customer ID bold, comic sans, font, red, and underlined. So you start by clicking on the cell and then click on the expression and right click and go to placeholder properties. And you want to click on a markup type, um, HTML, interpret the HTML tags as style, and then click on the FX to go to your expression. And this is the expression that we're using currently. We're going to want to add the HTML tags. Now, HTML tags are being interpreted as text, so you need to put it inside double quotes. And then use your standard HTML formatting. So you put your uh, left and right brackets, and in this case, we want B for bold. The font face, Comic Sans MS, that's covered by single quotes or an apostrophe. And we want the color to be red. Again, single quotes, and then we're going to do underline. And we have to join this all covered within, within double quotes. Join this to the expression. So we're saying the field value with, an, with a hyphen. And then do your closing HTMLs. Again, double quotes and the bracket and slash B to end the bold, slash F to end the font, slash U to end the uh, underline. And what you get in the report is the customer ID, bold, underlined, red, conic sand. So if we walk through that real quick. We are going to click once to highlight, click second to get the expression, right click, placeholder properties. We want to interpret as style. Go into your expression and I cheat, so I'm going to copy and paste. So I've got my, I want bold, font faces, the color, um, and then ending. And when we view it, probably shouldn't have cheated. Copy the whole field. My bad. Give me one more, one more try.
you know, um, just to save time, um, I've got something wrong in my my uh, syntax. But this is how the report would look. I don't want to take too much more time on part of it. Now, when you add objects, you can add a logo. And if you have multiple companies, you can use a proper logo for each company in one report. And the proper logo would conditionally display. You can add pictures. The pictures can be from a network file folder. Um, that requires some additional setup on the uh, server and with permissions. You can have hyperlinks to files, or you can have data, in, data visualization. So we're going to add a logo. So to add a logo, you click um, insert an image, and then you click on the location where you want the logo. Now, when you click it, you're going to get a general, and you have to select what type of image. Uh, embedded is the most common. That's where the source is. It could be an external, which is a location on your network. And like I said, that requires some setup and permissions on the server. It also could be a database. You can put PDFs and images in the database, but that will tend to make the database grow. So I prefer to just use embedded. And then you would import. And when you import, you navigate to the files that you want. Uh, you can bring in JPEGs or GIFs or EMPs or PNGs. So select your file and click it. And then you can select your size. I normally just go with thick proportional. So as you drag the handle, you don't get any distortion. It doesn't stretch. Um, it's just an easier thing in my mind to use just that. And then finally, you um, just uh, size it using the handle to size. So if we just do that real quick. We're going to insert an image. Stick it up here. This could be embedded. I'm going to import the 2W image. I'm going to leave the size as proportional. And as you resize it, it holds its shape and proportions. And now we have an image on here. So we're going to add a second logo. And in this case, when this report is run, I have a box set down for the alt logo. So the, the, the base logo is going to be your logo here. And the alternate logo will be the 2W tag. So if you highlight the logo, click the image properties, and put down visibility, and you want to show or hide based on an expression. One thing about conditional hiding, when you want to conditionally hide something, if the statement is true, you're hiding it. So in this case, we're testing the parameter check 01. That if I want to show the 2W logo, it's looking to see if the condition is true. If it's false, it would show the other. So if you click on the category, data sets under the category, and under item, the BAQ um, report parameter, and double click on the check 01, first check 01. The reason it's requiring it first is because the logo is in the header and it needs adding it. So if you double click it, it'll put a proper syntax up top, and you just put your condition is true, and it will format. You need to do this with the second logo as well. So on the 2W, we'd use the same logic, but the expression would be false. So when you run the report with the alt logo checked, you're going to get the 2W tech logo. If it's not checked, you would get the year logo here. So let's, uh, let's do that real quick. So I have the your logo here. I'm going to insert a second logo. Same logic. So 
size it out a bit. And we're going to right click image properties, visibility, shore height is an expression. I've already got this set as true. And speed things up, you can copy that first part. The second one, I want to say the image properties, visibility, conditional. Lost my copy. So when I run the report, this, I've saved the, uh, the GUID file. This is without the alternate logo. And if I take the other one, you get the 2W test logo. Final thing on this is you want these lined up. It would be better to have the logo centered above the title. So if you highlight the title, Hold the shift key down and highlight each of the logos. Right click layout, you can align the centers. And this will put them all centered over the title. So that's real fast. But highlight the title, shift, hold down on each logo, right click, layout, align the centers. And now they're properly lined up. Okay, data visualization are a way for users to quickly, easily understand what's on a report. So from the inserts, you can look at uh, there's charts, there are gauges, spark lines, data parts, spark lines, and indicators. Unfortunately, we don't have enough time to go through them all, so we're just going to go through one. So we're going to go back to our on time delivery report. And as you can see, the report's fine. Um, the on time percentage, is value, but you have to scan through and read to find out, ooh, here's one down at 50, here's a zero, here's a 67%. It's not as easy for the user to use. We're going to insert a column before the on time. And to do that, you just click on the on time, right click, insert a column to the left. And then if you click on the text box, right click, insert the data bar. And then in this case, we're going to just take the horizontal data bar, uh, double click it, and then we'll put it in the text box. And then it's easiest if you grab the expression from on time percent, because we obviously want these numbers to be the same. So if you grab that expression and copy it, if you double click in the text box and hit the plus sign um, and go to expression and paste it, you have the original report that just showed the numbers. But now you can see a graphical representation and quickly and easily see where issues are. So we can do this on the, uh, on the line system. Actually, my test system. So I'm going to insert a column to the left, size it out a bit. I'm going to copy this expression. I right click, insert data bar. I'm selecting the first data bar. I right click, hit the plus sign, an expression, paste it in. If you want to view it, And yes, you can get in here and you can, you can modify it. You can change the color of the bar. Um, there's a lot of things you can do. Again, for the sake of time, we're just going to cover this part of it. Okay, now let's have a word about, about metrics. Um, 
metrics are snapshot of your business. Uh, it could be a graph, it could be a trend over time, uh, giving you bar graphs or line graphs, scatter graphs, it could be proportional, like a pie chart. It could be key performance indicators, it could be tables. CW Technologies offers dashboards and gauges for Epicorp and RFP. What this does is it gives you a snapshot of your business in a central place. It's web-based. It's designed to be used with Epicore 10. It's a SQL interface. It has dashboards, key performance indicators. You can refresh at the frequency that you require. It could be daily. It could be every five minutes. Let's just spot a trend before it becomes a problem. So let's take a look. Lost my data screen. Sure, are you able to see the screen? Steve, Steve, will you see the PowerPoint? Um, it looks like you closed your desktop. Okay, that's what I'm concerned about. Got to love technology. Give me one moment, please. Do you have it back, Sue? Yep, we're good. Okay. This is the dashboard and gauges for Epicore 10. This is tied directly to your Epicor, to your uh, Epicor server. Um, the nice part about this is it's limited limited by invitation only. So whoever has access to the dashboard uh, can see it. If you don't, you don't even know they're there. Again, you can set your own refresh rate. This is my test database. I have it set on 12 hours. It's just 12 hours ago. It refreshes uh, in the middle of the night. Um, I've used these in the past where you run them on the on the monitors uh, in the shop. Let the uh, let the employees see how their productivity is. Um, but there's, there's sales information. Um, again, this is from my test database. Um, we have bar graphs. We can look at sales to budget, how we did over last, last year. There are uh, pie graphs. Um, again, more line graphs. Depending on who you are and what you're allowed to see, there, you can have other KPIs and tables. Um, you can see the AR aging. You can see the sales to budget. Uh, maybe you want to look at production on time percent completions. So by month, you can see how you've completed, for example, the assembly production or our on time per percentage of completion or in fabrication. Um, you should really measure the things that you want to, that you have, that you're able to control. If you can't control it, sometimes not a useful to measure, but measure the things you want to control, and then you can start to control them when you find what issues are lying. Um, just a word, if you think about it, there's over 1,700 tables in the Epicor SQL database. Um, some have 10, 12 columns, some have a couple hundred. They have 50 columns and 12,000 rows each. We're talking over a billion bits of data. Not information until you use it. But it's your data. So it's time to let it work for you. Um, now that's the shameless plug for our uh, CW Tech Report store. We've modified reports uh, based on what customers tend to request, uh, such as portrait jobs, uh, a more verbose, verbose bill, of, uh, bill of lighting, three-part checks. Um, we're all set and ready to go. We've also got custom design reports. Epicor doesn't provide it, so we've built them. Uh, they're ready, developed, and ready to implement. Uh, this includes um, installation and minor changes. I want a different font. I want something hidden. Um, we take care of that as part of the installation. If you need major changes, you need to. Uh, we would, you can do that um, at our standard rate. So basically, that's it. Uh, there was a lot to cover, um, and there's a lot.
um, but I thank you for your attention. And Sue, if you want to take over. Yep. Okay. Um, thank you, Steve. I think I speak for everyone to say that was a very good and detailed. Um, so we just did get um, a couple questions. Um, the first one we're going to start with is: Is there a fee for the Bright Gauge product? Yes, there is. That's a separate. Uh, that's a separate. Um, um, it's not a part of Epicor. It's offered through 2W. If you have questions about it, um, email me after or give me a call, and we can. Uh, I can tell you a little bit more about it. Um, the, some of the uh, they're called gauges that you had are the standard ones. So we've we've already built the logic to do a number of them, but we've had clients that say, "Can you make one that will show me?" And if we can, if you if you're if you're recording it and measuring it, then yes, I can make additional gauges. So, but it is a separate fee. It's a it's a one time setup and then a, a monthly fee to handle um, handle it. The one thing it does require is an external agent. It's a secure agent, but it requires an external agent into your uh, SQL database. Any other questions? Okay. Yeah, yeah, a couple more. Um, just, just a reminder for anybody, if you do have questions, you can use the chat um, feature on the left-hand side. We've gotten just a handful more questions coming in. Um, Steve's contact information should be up on your guys' screen now. Um, so if you do have questions or want follow-up information, go ahead and email him um, or give him a call, um, and he can get back to you um, after this webinar. Um, okay, Steve, next question is, do you have any documentation on launching new reports into Epicor 10 and sharing with all users? For example, if you're making a BAQ report, um, when you create the BAQ report, it will give you the bare bones. It will bring in your uh, the BAQ report results, the standard parameters, and then you, you build it out. Once you've tested the report and it works the way you want, you can add the BAQ or add the report to the menu um, structure and through the menu structure determine who has access to it. Any other questions? Um, yes, hold on. Can I hide a sub report? Absolutely, and it happens quite a bit. Um, let, me, let me see if we can get to something real quick. Share my desktop. Um, and I'm in my custom reports folder. Um, let's just open the portrait job travel real, real fast and show you what you can do. Okay, if I wanted to hide, for example, the traveler shipping schedule, um, there's two things I do. I don't like to delete because inevitably you're going to want it back. What I tend to do is I will make the background yellow, and then if you right click, row visibility, there's already an expression in there. Um, but you can just say hide. And now when you run the report, you'll no longer see that shipping schedule. So yes, you can do that. I'm not going to say that. Okay. Uh, looks like we have one final question then. Um, on invoices, purchase orders, sales order acknowledgments, there seems to be a lot of white space um, in the address box at the top. Can this be fixed? Yes. Um, Show you that also. If you look at the standard report that comes out of Epicor. The address block. Can I click into something? 
the address block is in a single row. So this is, this is a container, a rectangle, and you have everything built into a single row, but all of, them, all of these are going to show up. So if you look at the expression, this is saying that every time there's a tilde in the build to uh, list, because the address, the address is set up as customer name, address one, tilde, address two, tilde, address three, tilde, address four, tilde, and everything, this, build, this splits out the array. So what you can do is, and it's a little bit time consuming, but it, it works quite well. Is instead of having everything in one row, we had something. Instead of having everything in one one row, I've made a single row for each of the elements, and I have a conditional hide. that says if the build to address and the ship to address are both empty, hide the row. And in most cases, you don't use these last four rows, so it will hide those and compress the, uh, the, uh, the spacing, get rid of the white space for you. One word of warning, if you do that and you use advanced uh, print management, you will mess up your APM in all probability. So that's one caveat. Are there any other questions? Nope. I think that was all of them. Um, I know a few of you did ask about um, receiving Steve's PowerPoint presentation or if we were recording this webinar. Um, we are hoping that the webinar is recording as we speak, um, and that file would be available sometime next week if anyone would like a copy. Also, Steve is going to work on getting a streamlined version of his PowerPoint um, for those of you um, who, who want it, um, give him a few days to get that together. As you can see, he, he has a lot of slides, so we'll, we'll hopefully be able to condense that into something a little bit um, shorter for you. So again, if you want to just uh, shoot me a message or leave a message, and we'll try to get you uh, that information next week. Um, it looks like that's all that we have for today. So again, thank you everybody for joining us. Um, and if you do have any follow-up questions or, or would like any information, again, Steve's contact information um, is right there on the screen. Um, he's available through email or on the phone. Um, thank you so much, and everyone have a great day. Thank you all.